Uh, hello, everybody. I hope this finds you well. Um, I had an epiphany come to me the other day. I made an illustration for you. A lesson. I want you to bear with me. Thank you for your indulgences here. Uh, you do not have to agree with me on this. But uh, be kind in your comments. Have a good day, everybody. Enjoy. Okay, everybody. I'm going to do a little uh, bit of a lesson here. You see before you here these three stained glass windows. And this, of course, is drawing I did. Uh, each of these stained glasses, you know, stained glass windows in these churches, they're so beautiful. But they all have a story to tell in the glass. It was originally there. They put these stories in there. It's kind of a narrative in those first churches that used stained glass. Most of the people were illiterate and it was oftentimes the only scripture they saw. You may have heard the preacher talking, the priest. But chances are, when he read from the Bible, it was in another language that he didn't understand, namely Latin. You see here these three windows. And we'll go over them. You see here. The serpent. And the tree fruit of knowledge of good and evil. You know, this is the oldest story. And it's uh, telling us of the same lie that Satan tells men today. It's always the same lie. That you too can be as God with the knowledge. When Adam and Eve ate that fruit, the Bible says their eyes were opened and they saw they were naked. People look at that and mock and say, well, well, the Bible doesn't like the human body. What's wrong with the human body? Why were they ashamed of their human bodies? This is a total misunderstanding of what is being said. What is meant by what is said there? The devil told them that if they ate this fruit, their eyes would be open and they would be as God, knowing all things. Well, the devil lies. When they ate the fruit, they suddenly had knowledge of themselves, of their own frailties, their own weakness, knowledge of how small they really were. You know, it's insignificant. And then knowledge that they had disobeyed God. They were naked before God, before the world now. That is what that means. So they hid themselves trying to hide from God. People use that one also. They argue, how can you hide from God? He's supposed to be omnipresent, all-knowing. Didn't he know they was going to eat the fruit? Doesn't he know where they are? Why is he looking around what, looking for them? Can't he just go to them? This is also a misunderstanding of what is being said. And once men ate that fruit and committed that sin, they separated themselves from God, they caused a, a strange thing to happen. Of course God knew it would happen. You think he would place the fruit there if he didn't know the devil would tempt man into eating it. And of course God said, if you eat the fruit you shall surely die. And others say, well, the 
he didn't kill Adam. This is silliness right here. Because so Adam dies, Adam suddenly becomes mortal. Adam and Eve are now mortal beings. No longer in that sanctuary garden outside of the real world we know. Now they had to go out and live in that real world. That cruel, violent world we know. Where nature is <laughs> very harsh. And there they were, a frail human, now having to deal with things such as animals that will eat them, and food not readily available as it was before. So they had to plant food, and grow food. They had to toil in the ground to live. Or before all they had to do was reach out and grab their food off the tree. That is the first representation of man's fall from grace. Now, take you to the second window. See the symbols in the second window. Flower. This is a symbol of love, redemption, salvation. That there was hope in love. God had not forgotten us. Now, he takes us to the third window. You see the symbols. Much is said about the Star of David. That symbol has been used for many different things. It represents many different things. Here, the symbol is used to represent those organizations and institutions man creates, religions, science, philosophy, yes, even atheism is represented here. These are the things man sees that brings light to his world, enlightenment. This is a symbol of enlightenment this world. So you now see the symbols. What we are doing here, what I'm representing here, is what is happening in this world with us. You say we set this up as a paradigm. We're all looking at things through stained glass. Though the glass lets light in. You can see the light. You know the light is there. You do not get a full picture. Sometimes someone has to come along and open this window. Open these windows that we place our lives in. Someone comes along and opens that window well, this usually makes everybody angry at that person. The person's usually attacked for it. And there's reasons for this. The reason I see here is because we've become so attached to our paradigm, to our dogmas. 
anyone comes along and opens the window to shine the real light on things, people get upset because they like the pretty colors that their belief gives them. I have a solution, the only solution I can think of.